that. Paul, in Romans chapter 9, verses 4 through 5, we read, Paul says, These are the Israelites, his brethren, who are the Israelites, to whom pertain the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the service of God, and the promises. And Jesus Christ is the high priest over the service of God and the promises, the glory, and the covenants. Verse 5, of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all the eternally blessed God. And let everyone say, Amen. Amen. You see, Jesus is the high priest over all of those covenants of the nation of Israel, the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises that are still in force for the nation of Israel. God promised in His Word that Israel would never cease from being a people. He said in one certain place, even if the sun refuses to shine or the moon to give its light, never will I destroy or allow to be destroyed the nation of Israel. It's His covenant people. As long as the sun shines, as long as the moon gives its light, there will be a nation of Israel upon this earth because it's God's chosen people. Jesus said this, the nation of Israel will continue, or pardon me, the Gentiles will continue to be in the service of God until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And then God will once again turn His attention back to that tiny nation of Israel and save them to the uttermost. Also, Jesus Christ is the high priest of the church of whom we are His body, the righteous. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 1. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, which is the Greek name of Silas, for the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in Him was yes. Verse 20, For all the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him, amen, to the glory of God. You see, Paul says that when we come boldly before the throne of grace, that we might obtain mercy in a time of need, God is not wishy-washy, where He might say yes one time and no at another time. But when we come boldly before the throne of grace and we have within our hand the testament, the last will and testament of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we go before God and we recite the promises of God that are found in the last will and testament, then God says, or Paul tells us, that God will say yes, and so be it, so that He might receive glory. You see, one time Jesus and the disciples were traveling, and they found a blind man. And the blind man sat begging by the gates. And the disciples asked Jesus, Who sinned that this man was born blind? And Jesus said to them, It's not because of sin that this man was born blind. Neither his parents' sin made him blind, or his own sin made him blind, but he, Jesus said, was blind so that I can come restore his sight so that God might receive the glory, so that the glory of God might be revealed. And then he touched the man's eyes and he was made whole. 
so that God might receive the glory. Remember Peter and John in the book of Acts? They went to church and along the way they saw a man who was lame. And the lame man was begging, begging for alms. And Peter said this, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee. And he touched him in the name of Jesus, and the man's legs received strength, and he, along with Peter and John, went into the temple, leaping and praising God for the healing that he had received. You see, for many, many years, the gentleman sat there because of the lameness in his feet, and asking for money, asking for alms. But Paul, pardon me, Peter and John said, you don't need money. What you need is the healing of the Lord Jesus Christ so that Jesus Christ might receive the glory. And Jesus Christ did receive the glory for that healing of the lame man. I may not have what you Want, but I know what you need. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And that man certainly did at the name of Jesus. You see, we have promises of God in the Tanakh and also in the Brit Hadashah. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah watches over that word to perform it. And as we come boldly before the throne of grace, God is not wishy-washy. Yes, sometimes and no at other times, but all the promises of God are in Him, yes, and in Him, amen. Can you say amen? Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through 18, Jesus was proclaiming or asked about His mission. Jesus said this, Do not think that I came to abolish the law and the prophets, I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Verse 18, For truly I say unto you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or stroke shall pass from the law until all is accomplished. You see, Jesus came to the Jewish people and they had the Tanakh. The Torah, the Nevi'im, and the Ketuv'im, which we call the Old Testament. The Psalms, the Prophets, and the Torah. And Jesus said, I'm not coming to abolish all of the Old Testament. I've come to fulfill. Lo, in the volume of the book it is written of me. I come to do thy will, O God. And so everything that was written about Messiah, He came to fulfill. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and with His stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Every one of us have turned unto His own way. But God laid upon him the iniquity of us all. And Jesus Christ fulfilled that when he died our sentence of death upon the cross of Calvary. It was promised that Jesus would be born of a virgin. And it happened just that way. Jesus Christ fulfilled the law and the prophets for us because we could not We were flunking in the elementary school that pertained to God. We could do nothing right. Everything in our life was wrong. But Jesus Christ came and He did everything right. He gained an A plus on every test that you and I could go through. He gained that A plus not for Himself, but so that we might enter into His grade with God the Father. Because God the Father demanded perfection. And He made or He communicated the law 
to Moses. And then he told Moses, if anyone breaks even the least of these laws, what did he tell Moses? He's guilty of every one of them. So if a person just mm, breaks one of the Ten Commandments, then God said he's guilty of every one of them to show us that there was no way in the flesh that we could please God. One verse says, even if we try to be righteous, all of our righteousness is as of filthy rags. And so we must have a Savior to come and fulfill the law for us. Do everything right according to the Word of God. Live by the Torah for us so that we could enter into His grave. Hallelujah. Thank God that we can be washed in the blood of Jesus and partake of His ministry as the priest of the Most High God. He is our advocate. When the enemy goes before the throne of God and accuses us because he is the accuser of the brethren, we have an high priest, an advocate with the Father. And Jesus says, it is true that they did this and so. It is true that they missed the mark, that they have sinned. But then he reaches towards the Father and he states, yes, but I died their sentence of death and I shed my blood for the remission of their sin. And as we enter into that promise of God that says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, then our sin and our iniquity is cast from the east as far as the east is from the the West. Ephesians chapter 1, Paul prayed this for each and every one of us, that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling. You are called by the Lord Jesus Christ. And also, what are the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints? Paul prayed that we would understand our inheritance. That we would understand all the ramifications of the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. How that He died our sentence of death, was raised for our justification, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for us. That's part of the inheritance of the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 19, And what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe according to the working of His mighty power which God wrought in Christ Jesus when He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places. Verse 21, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. 